Hello, this is Jerem playing Oxygen Not Included, and today I'm building a system to store food, and I can store an infinite amount of food and make it last forever. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is get a wall that can have access for duplicates to be able to reach between it, but not destroy my vacuum. So I'm making this out of a metal gold tile. And that's just for future decoration purposes. That's not necessary for this particular build. It's just going to be difficult to install this gold tile later on if I don't do it now. So now that I've got a tile there, I now want to build an airflow tile at this location. All right, just have a quick note that this airflow tile is in a vacuum. I want to make sure I maintain that vacuum. So now what I want to do is I want to destroy this tile. I want to have water there, and that's going to allow my dupes to be able to access that. But I want to do that in such a way that I don't destroy the vacuum that's right here. So let me show you how I go about this. All right, so I've got a bottle emptier here. I'm going to put some water in it. I have some water dropped off. I just want a very little bit. In fact, I just want the minimum amount of water that I can have. So I'm going to even destroy this tile and get them to mop up all this. And build this tile. I'm going to destroy this tile. But let's destroy this tile. I've got water there and I still have a vacuum. So this is a successful thing. As I mentioned earlier, this part is optional. I'm making it out of gold because I want gold to be covering my base in the future. It's an optional thing. It, this could be a regular tile. So now that I have that, I'm going to create the wall and destroy the tiles on both sides of the water. I have reachability now across the wall. And as well, that little bit of water is preventing gas from going into the vacuum area. So I measured this out and decided I'm going to need an extra tile underneath. So I'm digging out space for them to be able to walk to their Atmos suits and creating another layer of tile and then digging out. So I'm going to make this out of granite. I'm going to make it six tiles wide. The idea is I'm going to have food dropped off right here, ingredients dropped off right here, but before I drop them off, they're going to go through this system of cooling. So what this is, is a giant frozen granite block, or it will become frozen eventually. It's going to have a conveyor rail that goes through it, so any food and ingredients are going to go through that and take uh, the coolness from the granite with it. And I'm also going to use a radiant pipe filled with ethanol that's actually going to do the cooling. I'm going to go to the other world to pump out some ethanol from here. So I'm continuing to build up the granite tiles as I put the radiant pipes and the two sets of conveyor rails underneath it, all the way up to eight tiles tall. All right, so I've got my granite ice block created. I'll now show you how to take this and cool it down using ethanol. Next step is to create a liquid reservoir. Now having the new ethanol line, input into that reservoir system so it can fill it with uh, ethanol. So while that ethanol fills up, I'm going to automate my farm. I'm going to bring in a sweeper and a conveyor loader. So what I ultimately want to have happen is any of the mushrooms that grow are going to be picked up by this, go through the freezer and be stored in the ingredients location. Okay, so I've got my ethanol in this system. I'm going to put in the next part of this. And I'm going to need a liquid shutoff for that. Here I'm bringing in a liquid shutoff. That needs to be powered. And how this is going to work is ethanol is going to go out of this tank. It's going to go into this. And it's going to be conditional of whether it goes through the aquifer or not. So I'll put a temperature check. So it's going to read the temperature of the ethanol. And if it's too warm, it's going to put it through this system. If it's cold enough, it's gonna go in this direction. I'm gonna put this through a liquid bridge. And I wanna have the ethanol that comes out of here have a priority on the way out. So they're gonna to merge together at this point, whether the stuff is already cold or the stuff that it was just chilled, with this being the priority coming out. And it's gonna go into the whole system for cool. So this will make its way down here, the cold ethanol is gonna wrap through. And I'm going to have to connect this to the input up here. It's probably going to be easier if I wrap it around this way. So you know what? I'm going to change this a little bit. Now the other thing is I do want to go through the granite tiles 
for a little bit of extra cooling on them. So I'm gonna connect this together. Now I don't need radiant pipes in the vacuum. That's not gonna have any benefit for me. So I'm essentially just creating a cycle for this to go through and I now need to put in a setting. So I'm, I'm gonna say if the temperature is above minus 30, do some cooling and let's have a look. So it is, I'll slow this down. This is going through, it's going out at minus six degrees. It's taking the temperature reading and say, yeah, it is in fact uh, above minus 30. So turn this machine on, which means it's gonna go through here and do some cooling. It goes in minus five, comes out minus 19 or so, excellent. And that's gonna go through my system and we'll keep doing this while cooling down this granite tile until it reaches minus 30 here. And then the actual temperature on this side will actually be another, uh, what's the temperature difference? It looks like you know, 15 degrees cooler than that. Uh, I really only need below minus 20. I'm just adding some extra cooling just because, but uh, that, that is that. I'm putting all the food in the world inside this storage bin and using the conveyor loader to put it through the granite tile. Okay, so slow things down here. Let's have a look. I'll put on the conveyor overlay. So a little bit of fried mushroom is going in. It's going in at 25 degrees. That is not even good enough for refrigeration. It's going through here. It's already hit uh, about minus 30 degrees. I this I this uh this area is too big for you know what it's doing in reality, but it I mean completely fine. So we very quickly, in a short amount of time, froze our food. It's in a deep freeze, it's in a sterile environment, and that effectively means that it's not going to go uh, bad. It's going to sit there until it's eaten. So I'm putting an electric grill in. I also have an auto sweeper that's going to take the ingredients that are sitting on that granite tile and putting it in to be cooked. And once something is cooked, it's going to be put in the conveyor loader to be put through the cooling and ultimately stored forever until it's eaten. The other side to this is the ingredients. So here I have a farm that's collecting mushrooms that's putting it through the cooler as well and stored next to the kitchen so it, uh, it'll stay forever until it's cooked. And we're just watching it already. It is going down to minus 33. So it's, it's perfect, exactly the temperature we want going to be dumped on here and this machine is going to pick it up and load it into the electric grill and cook we'll cook it turn it into some food and the food will do the cooling there we are and we can see some automation from the other world bringing in material all right that is amazing because i no longer have to rely on this area which again is not even frozen anymore anyways and I can continue to cook food and have it uh, last forever. And there's no limit to how much I can store here. So that's really good. And final thing is just double check that our vacuum is still intact. It is. We've got minus 32 here and 60 degrees and, that, and uh, rising up there. Let's look up here. I'm a little bit concerned about the heat that's going to be generated as I produce more steel. So how about in the next episode, we do base cooling. And I hope to see you there.